everyone, it's Sharon from the Child, Youth, and Family team for the City of Burlington. And today I'm bringing you yet another activity. As you can see, there's a lot of things on my table and you're probably like, Sharon, what are we doing today? Well, we're going to do some unconventional painting today. So the first step for you is that you and your kids or whomever you're with, we're going to wander around the house and try and find some odd bits and pieces that you think might make some fun patterns when you go to paint. So I have a tractor. It's got really neat nubbly wheels. Lego super fun. Little piece of bubble wrap. Bubble wrap is always a good time. I have this weird little thing. It's supposed to hold up my phone. Doesn't do a very good job, but we're going to see what it does for painting today. This happens to be the cap from a coconut whipped cream bottle, but it had some interesting shapes, so I saved it from the recycling bin. I have a strainer, my potato masher, got a fork. Um, this is an old toothbrush. I like to keep them because they're great for cleaning and cleaning in nooks and crannies, so that could be a super fun thing. Got some dinky cars um, and this weird little thing. Wander around the house, see what you can find. The super fun is like what kind of interesting shapes, patterns, etc. do you think they might make? Ask permission. Your family members might not want you to use their silverware for painting with, so just make sure that you're asking before you put paint on things. Things that are metal or um, plastic like this are much easier obviously to clean. Things like fabric, your paint might end up sticking in, so you might want to avoid something like that unless it's an old rag that you are gonna get rid of. You don't need a, a lot of stuff for this. <clears throat> you need three colors of paint, ideally, right? Um, think of your color wheel that we learned back in, I'm not sure exactly when, grade one, two. Um, you need red, yellow, and blue. Red and yellow make orange. Red and blue make purple. Blue and yellow make green. If you have some black and some white, you can lighten and darken as you see fit. So just make sure that you're playing around. You don't need a lot for this. I also have uh, the, the box that I used when we did some marble painting. So you can use something like that to keep things contained. I'm not going to because you can't see what I'm doing today. The other thing, this is a piece of a cardboard box. I am going to use that because it's a flat surface, just something to protect your table. So if things get a little bit exciting when you're painting, it hopefully won't go all over your table. I like to use painter's tape on things that holds things down, especially if you have little ones that can knock paper pretty easily. Uh, it's super helpful to, to make it a good experience for them. In terms of the paint, this is an old beet tray. I just washed and sanitized it and uh, it's obviously already been used, um, but they're great because they're a nice flat surface. So if you have things with tires that you need to roll through, they're really great. Uh, and I also have paper plates, but you might want to use them um, just because obviously they're for eating, uh, but you can use something like that if you have it as well. I'm not going to use a whole bunch of colors. Um, only because I'm not gonna create this beautiful masterpiece for you on camera. I think you guys can do that yourselves. Um, but I am just gonna show you some of the things that you can do. The fun part about this activity is one, you can have a conversation as to what you think your, um, your toothbrush or whatever the implement is that you're using, what it might look like. What are the fun things that you can do with it? And then once they've figured out sort of the patterns and shapes that it can make, how can you then use those to create a picture? So the tines of your fork could be super, super fun. Rays on a sunshine. Ooh, that wasn't very good. And then you can play with how much paint you need and that sort of thing. So it's making some interesting lines. I also have a container with some water in it so I can throw things in it right away so that hopefully it'll make your cleaning a little bit easier. You don't have to do it. It does help though. Here's my weird little phone holder. If you didn't do a very good job. Um, I use the round part, making some nice simple like circles for you. And these are its little feet. And because I didn't have a ton of paint on it, you can actually see his little hooves. Uh, this was the cap I had. 
It's a lot of pain. Hmm. So that's kind of neat. That could be a flower. Who knows? You potentially could use the sides as well because it has an interesting pattern. Though it's not really turning out that great. But it gives your kids a chance to experiment and have a conversation about what you think it's going to look like. Too fresh. Paint on there. Um, swipe it. Um, oh, there we go. So a little less paint and some swiping gets an interesting technique when it's too blobby. Doesn't really do a whole lot. These are really great for cleaning afterwards. It'll help you get into nooks and crannies. So keep your toothbrush if you have one. This is my, my sieve. And that's a super fun pattern. You don't have to have paint brushes to paint. <laughs> and this is my tire. So that's the tire track and that one's super fun. If you have something that has like caterpillar tracks on it, like a sort of like a tank or a, a bulldozer, that could be really, really interesting. Dinky cars, if they don't have nubblies on the tires are just gonna leave lines, but that's super fun. If you have this box, like we did the marble painting, you could be rolling your cars back and forth and make a really neat pattern picture that way as well. And it's super fun for your kids. Um, bubble wrap. If the bubbles are unpopped, I think this works out a lot better just because they'll stand up a little bit better, but that's what bubble wrap looks like, but you can kind of like a neat cheetah print. You could use something like that. Um, it was headed for the recycling or garbage anyway, so it's just one more use from it. I will say for bubble wrap, if you have some and it's got some good bubbles, the really thick stuff is great for an outdoor activity. Wrap the bubble wrap and tape it onto your kid's feet. Lay out some paper, give them some um, paint to step in and have them walk. It feels really neat. It's an interesting sensory experience. It's funny if the bubbles pop, it feels kind of funny. And then you can make some really neat patterns on your paper. Uh, it'll work with small bubble wrap, but I find that the larger stuff works really, really well. This is the last thing I have. And interesting because of the shape that it had it's kind of like a screw hole didn't do it that first when you can kind of see the plus mark that's in it but wander around let your creativity soar let your kids creativity soar find out what they can come up with so you can have a test sheet like this you know kind of what things are going to work like you know how much paint you might need and then they can create a really fun picture or it's just neat to paint with something that isn't a paintbrush or your fingers have fun, create something beautiful, and we would be more than happy if you can share it with us. And don't forget to live and play every day. Bye.